voor Nederlandse ondertiteling. Klik op de drie puntjes bovenin, dan op ondertiteling en vervolgens op Nederlands. Hola, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos al canal de Team Baxea. Ahora con sus títulos en español. Vi har nu undertext på svenska. Klicka på sluten bildtext och väl svenska. Du kan också klicka på captions på norska undertexten. Boating season is here, but as you can see, I'm not on the boat. Still at my house, beautiful Rhode Island. Anyway, I wanted to put a quick video together of the five things that we professionals use that might help out you guys in your boating season, whether you're power or sail or whatever. So anyway, stick around. Five tips from the pros. So my thought was, I'd bring you along with me while I did my chores for the things I need to do while I'm home. And the first thing I have to do is to, well, not the first thing I get home, but the first thing I have to do today is to go to Home Depot. So that's where we're off to right now. But now it's time for number five. I call this the speed rule. So this is just something that we use and you guys can use too. Um, it'll be probably more useful to power boaters than it will be to sailboaters just because sailboaters usually don't go that quickly and they can usually stop pretty quickly if they need to. But the way we define how fast we go, especially in reduced visibility, this is, this is really geared towards reduced visibility situations, heavy fog, rain, snow, that sort of thing. What we try to do is look and see how far we can see. So if we can see a quarter of a mile, we can go as fast as we want as long as we can stop within an eighth of a mile. So in other words, you can go as fast as you want as long as you can stop within half of the distance that you can see. So if you can see 10 miles, and hopefully you can stop within five, it shouldn't be an issue. So that's a speed rule we use when you say sometimes should I reduce speed and visibility? Now there, there are some inherent problems with that and that's that if you were meeting yourself, if you were doing say five knots and somebody else was doing five knots and you could see a quarter of a mile ahead. So the reason why we, do, we split the difference is that if they're doing the same speed you are, you both will see each other at the same time. Where that runs into problems is if I'm doing five knots in reduced visibility and somebody else is moving right along at 30 knots, there's no way they can see far enough up that they can stop, get the engine, you know, from while you're going, you can't just pull it right back and put it in reverse unless you have a jet drive. <laughs> so you have to get the engine in reverse or in neutral and then reverse and then get the way off the boat. And all of that would be happening if you were going, um, you'd be covering a lot of ground if you were in reduced visibility. And so, so that's why we slow down. So that's our speed rule. So we made it to Home Depot. Before I go in there, I want to tell you about number four. Call this tide on buoy. Now remember, what we call tide, many of you guys call current. So we're not really talking so much about the vertical height of tide, but we're talking about the horizontal current the tide affects. Now, 
as many people will say, no, the prudent mariner never relies solely on one aid to navigation. And uh, that's definitely the case when it comes to tide charts, the algorithms they have in your chart plotters and that sort of thing. So look, a lot of the, you know, the NOAA publications, all those sorts of things that you have, the pilot books that tell you all that, all that's wonderful. Tides are very predictable if nothing changes. And what I mean by nothing changes is, um, you know, there can be something as small as dredging in the area that might have changed something. But the big one is the wind. You don't realize it, but man, if that wind is stacking up the waves in the sound, it's going to make a big difference in how late the tide changes if you're looking for slack water. There's also an issue of when you go places, you'll see that especially people who travel up and down rivers will notice that on one side of the river it's going to run a lot faster than on the other side of the river. And you know, it depends on the, the, the topography of the bottom and it also depends on you know the the curve you know that usually uh, if you hug the bank it's one thing if you hug the corner it's another anyway what I'm trying to get at is if you're going to approach a dock or if you're going to do any sort of maneuver you're usually going to be going by something and one thing that we use in the commercial field is you know obviously we'll have an idea of what the tides going to be doing through the NOAA publications but then when we get to where we're going, we're looking for local telltales. And one of the best ones we use, or the best ones for me anyway, are local aids to navigation. You're going to go by a buoy, maybe a no-wake buoy, maybe if you're up north, a pot buoy, if you're down south, a crab buoy, anything like that. Um, so if you, if you go and you can see the tide working on the buoy, remember I'm saying tide, you're saying current. If you see the current working on the buoy, Regardless of what happens, that the you might say to yourself, well, I'm going to expect a fair tide when I get to the dock. And as you approach the dock, you come by a no-wake buoy, or maybe if you're in the down south, a manatee area buoy or something like that, and you see that the tide is opposing you, then you say to yourself, oh, my God, I'm not going to go with what the book tells me. I'm going to go with what I see. So buoys are a really good way to judge that. If you're around a place that has commercial oil booms or anything that's floating in the water, a lot of times as we approach a dock, we'll look at booms that are stacked up at the dock waiting to be deployed, and we'll see which way they move. And that's just doing the same thing that we're doing when we use the, we look at judging the tide at the aids to navigation. So you can do the same thing. And so what I'm telling you is, go ahead. Get an idea of what the tide's going to be doing from the from all of your references that you can use, whether it be the tide app on your phone, uh, the the tides coming from your chart plotter, or or your GPS, and uh, the tides coming from publications. All those are great, and use them. But as you're approaching something, and you're especially if you're looking for a specific thing like you know slack to ebb or slack to flood or something like that, you can see if the if, if those are 20 minutes off, in some places where we go, it's a tremendous amount of tide in 20 minutes. So in other words, what, what, what I might have thought was going to be slack water, I might have a knot and a half coming against me. And I'll see that and prepare for it when I go by. So that was number four, buoys and tide. All right, let me go into Home Depot. Okay, so number three, but before I tell you about number three, I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm at the Rhode Island Blood Center and giving a double red cell donation. I have to do this because all of you people that are younger than I am are scared to do it. So I have to do it because the young, healthy people, I'm, I like to still think that I'm somewhat young and definitely healthy. But anyway, giving blood's real easy and you ought to come do it with us but let's get back to number three number three is anchoring in distress this actually just happened to me this last hitch when I was in New York and we are coming down you guys have seen my uh, videos about coming down the East River coming back from New Haven come back uh, around Hunts Point and right over by the North Brother Island there was a boat or actually I think it's off of Barreto Point there was a boat 
that looked like he was just like uh, anchored right in the middle of the channel. Fortunately, our barge was light, so I was able to come up alongside him and ask him over the PA system if he was in distress, and he was. So here, here's my thing. This guy was in trouble. He, uh, so he immediately threw his anchor out. But he could have just drifted, and he could have drifted anywhere. So if you get into trouble and you're going to anchor, you don't have to throw your anchor out right in the middle of the channel. He was a little boat that probably drew about 18 inches of water, and you know, uh, with a light tug, I'm probably drawing about 13 feet. So <laughs> there's places that I can't go that he could go. So anyway, I don't mean to pick on him the whole time. He was just panicked and didn't know what to do. So I'm just telling you guys, if you get in duress, in distress, and you need to do something, you need to anchor, look around you. If you're not going to go aground, anchoring might just be one of the, you know, if you had an engine failure and you say you want to throw your anchor out, an engine failure, you're not dying. But if you throw an anchor out in the middle of the channel and get run over by commercial traffic, then you'd end up dying. So you turned a little problem into a very big one. So my number three one was anchoring in distress. Before you throw your anchor out, look at where you are and evaluate what the problem is. For all you know, you could be drifting to a better place to anchor. Maybe more shoal, maybe uh, you drift out of the way, out of the channel, out of everyone's way, and to wait until the cavalry comes to get you. So that's number three. All right, see if round for number two. Well, that was fun. Not only did I get a nice little bandage, Gave up two units of blood, but I also got my six gallon cup for giving six gallons. I think they made a mistake because about a year or two ago, I got an eight gallon cup. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if they, I shouldn't have got that eight gallon cup and now I got the six gallon cup. But anyway, now I'm over here going to. West Marine. Many of you are familiar with that. So this brings us up to the number two th uh, thing on my list of pro tricks that we use that you guys can use too. And this one I'm going to call buoys at night. This was a uh, this is an old Captain Mike. We'll call him Mike B. He was a uh, captain for mobile for years and years and years, and then I was fortunate enough to deck for him back in the day. I can remember going up at, at nighttime and uh, looking on the chart, this was before there were chart plotters, and saying, there's a buoy up there. And he goes, Tim, can you see the buoy? And I'm like, no, I don't see it. He goes, I can see it. I'm like, no, I, I can't see it. I couldn't figure out why he could see it. And he taught me that at night, when you're looking for buoys, don't look for the buoy. Look, I mean, this is obviously an unlit buoy. This is a, a can or a nun that, is, that you know is up there. But he told me to look for the disturbance in the water. And it sounds silly, but as soon as you figure that out, like I can tell you that now, if you haven't done that, go out at night when it's a really dark night and look for, you know, where the tide is working on a buoy and you'll see the ripples of the water will show up long before the buoy will. So that's that's something that's uh that has come to play for me for many times where I can't find the buoy, but you first find the disturbance in the water and that you can back up to where the buoy is. All right. So then I also want to talk to you. I'll call this still in number 2. I don't know if all of you know this, but if you're like going either into the sun in the morning or you're sailing off into the sunset in the evening, and if you're going through a channel and there are nuns and cans, red and green, sometimes you can see that there's a buoy, but you don't know which one it is because you're just the sun is behind the buoy. So uh, you're just seeing a silhouette. If you see if you see a nun, which would be the red buoy, it's gonna have a little taper on the top, kind of like a nun might have if she was wearing a pope's hat. 
I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so uh, if you see a triangle on top, that's because you, you won't be able to see any colors if the sun is right behind it. But through the shape of the buoy, you can say, okay, that's going to be red. And if it goes up and it's square, if you're seeing a, a rectangle, um, then it's going to be a, a green buoy. So those are my number two things. Okay, I got my teak cleaner, my teak bright brightener, and my teak oil. Fortunately, it's not to be doing the teak on the decks of my boat. It's to be doing the teak furniture on my, at my house. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to number one. The number one trick that, or tip that I think that uh, we in the professional side use all the time, and I'm not so sure, although I don't know, maybe a lot of you guys use it, but uh, it's one of those things that I, I don't hear a lot in, about in the uh, recreational world. And that's what I just want to call, it's a broad topic, but I'll just call it ranging. And unlike a uh, sniper that will range things or a golf person who wants to know how far it is, where ranging is with distance, we range things by t finding out if we're in the channel or where things are. And this is where we'll have like range lights and you'll see them on a, on a chart. And I think that hopefully when I edit this, I'll go and I'll put some pictures of charts where they have range lights there and you'll see that they'll have one light here and one light here you know above it but there's a separation between the two so as they move back and forth they obviously stay stationary but as you move back and forth it gives the appearance that the range lights move and when that happens you can tell exactly where you are and that works for range lights but it works for everything and we use it quite often to judge set and drift set and drift is a uh, you know where you might be aiming somewhere, but the wind or the current, the tide, might be having you fall down. So, in other words, you might you might be, especially if you're sailing, you might be pointing at say 90 degrees, but your way that's being made good might be 60 degrees. So that 30 degrees of separation is a result of set and drift, or whatever. Anyway, so what happens is. We'll be looking at a set of buoys marking a channel and we'll take this information and we'll have it in our head and we say we'll be seeing a buoy, we might have a predictor line on our chart, that, uh, on our chart plotter that's predicting that we're going to be, even though we're headed this way, we're going to be falling down onto the buoy like this. And so what's, what, what happens is we can look visually on that buoy and then the next buoy and even the next buoy if there's more than one there and you can make a mental line almost like you're snapping a line between all those buoys and you can see where it is on your boat and if you're falling down if you're getting closer and closer to that line you don't even need the chart plotter to tell you that and we call that ranging and we like I say we range everything you can do it from buoys you can do it from range lights range lights also have day markers so that you can use them in the daylight as well and then there's also uh, We'll also use ranges for things where we might be looking at a smokestack or a tower, a water tower, maybe a big tree or a flagpole. When those two things line up, we're just exactly where we want to be. And these are things that you'll figure out on your own. So you don't have to have something on the chart. You don't have to do that. Even if you're unfamiliar with an area, you can look at different things like you lining up buoys and snap a line mentally between them and say, and say, as long as those buoys are like this, you're good. But as soon as they go like that, you're going to be bad. And then you'll figure all that out. But that's something that we do a lot. You can also do this with traffic. So in other words, um, I think I mentioned this in one of the videos a while ago, but there's a truck going by right now. I have my back window open because I have a 12 foot piece of trim that I have to stick through my window. Um, yeah, so if you have a stanchion for a safety line, you know, a lot of boats, whether they're power or sail, it doesn't, have to be, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's power or sail. If you have a stanchion, lifelines that run down the side of your boat, or just a grab rail, as you're steaming along, if you're holding a straight course or relatively straight course and you see somebody else out there, if you can line them up somewhere like on your rail, remember that their one point and your rail, wherever that stanchion is, will be the second point. 
And if you line those two up, you keep watching them. And the same thing's going to happen. If those two stay on the same, if they stay lined up like this, and you keep watching them, they're, they're going to come be getting closer like that. You're going to, you guys are going to be on top of each other in a certain amount of time. If you go and you're watching it and suddenly this starts going like this, that means that the boat, this would be the boat and this would be your rail, that the boat is going, it's, it's going to take your stern. If you start seeing it go like this, that means you're going to take his stern and he's going to go by you. And you're just using the same principle of ranging like you would when you range, you know, when you use a, a set of range lights when you're coming in on a range or lining up buoys. But now you can do it with a moving target as well. So those are my five my five things that uh, I hope will help you guys out. Like I say, you guys probably know four out of five. You might even know all five out of five, but it never hurts to refresh them. So remember the speed rule, try to go, uh, make sure that you can stop in half the distance that you can see. Tie it on the buoys. Um, at nighttime when you're, you know, um, or not, not at nighttime, sorry, when you're, when you're coming up to a dock, when you're coming to do something, you need to get alongside a, a pier, a gas, you know, maybe going to the gas dock. Check out the tide. See how things are. And you don't have to just do it on a book. Look right exactly in the water. And so, you know, like sometimes you can see, on depending on how hard the current runs where you're at, you can even see, you know, Floscum and Jescum going by the dock. And that will give you a good indi indication, not only of the direction of the tide or whether it's slack or not, but also how fast it goes too. And then the third one is if you get into problems and you have to throw your anchor, before you throw your anchor, figure out if throwing your anchor is going to make a bigger problem. In other words, if your engine dies and you might be able to drift for three hours before you get into shore or closer to shore or anything like that, you might not want to be right in the middle of the channel when you drop the anchor. And then uh, looking for buoys at night, look for the, look for the water being all messed up. And, uh, you know, the, I don't mean messed up, but you can see the, the, wake you know the disturbance in a, on a clear day you can see you know on a clear night you can see the water's almost glassy and then there'll be ripples and you can follow those ripples up to find where the black hole is and that's going to be where the buoy is and then ranging is the last one anyway those are my quick five that i uh, hope will help out and like i say most of you know most of them but uh if we can help out one person we made the place a better place so Thank you so much. Hope you guys have liked this, and uh, make sure you leave me a comment. And if there's something you guys want want to see me do, please, uh, please send me an email. Uh, you know, uh, you can email me. You can find me on Instagram, email, and in the comments here. And it's all Tim B at C, whether it's Instagram or Tim B at C at Gmail dot com or Tim B at C at this channel. So do that. And if you like these videos and you want to support them, um. You know, you could think about becoming a patron. If you don't, that's totally fine. No pressure. I, I'm just really happy that you guys are watching them. But uh, if you'd like to do more, we do have a patron account. Thank you so much. Be safe out there. And wash your hands.